One thing I've been holding off for a while is that there's actually potential for memory leaks in our application. So for example, we have this asset listing view model, and this view model takes in an asset store and subscribes to the state changed event on the asset store, but we never unsubscribe from that event. And that would be an issue because the asset store is essentially a singleton, the way that we register it with dependency injection. It lasts for the entire lifetime of the application. So that means when we subscribe to that event, the asset store will always reference the asset listing view model since we never unsubscribe, which means the asset listing view model is never going to get destroyed. Now this actually isn't an issue because our asset listing view model, whenever we instantiate those, those live for the entire lifetime of the application as well. So if we look at our add view models, and as you can see, all of these are added as singletons. So they have the same lifetime as the asset store. So we really end up only instantiating the asset listing view model about three times throughout the application, I believe, in the asset summary view model, the portfolio view model, and the cell view model. So it's not like we're constantly instantiating these and just having this memory leak that grows endlessly. But let's say, for example, our portfolio view model is now transient. So that means the portfolio view model, we're going to instantiate a new one every time we go to the portfolio page, which means we instantiate a new asset listing view model, which means we subscribe to this event and this asset listing view model never gets cleaned up. So for example, let's put a destructor in here and put a breakpoint and we will see that this never actually gets hit. And let's put a breakpoint in the constructor so that we can see that we keep on instantiating these asset listing view models. So here we go, portfolio. We instantiate the portfolio view model, which instantiates the asset listing view model. So there we go, leaving the portfolio page. Still haven't hit the destructor. Back to portfolio, we go back in the constructor. So we are just constantly constructing asset listing view models and they never get cleaned up because the asset store always references the asset listing view model that we instantiate. So it can't get cleaned up because it has a reference. So let's leave this destructor here and let's take care of this memory leak by unsubscribing from this event somewhere in our application so that our asset listing view model can get cleaned up. So what I'm going to do is define a method on my base view model, view model base, for disposing. So this will be a virtual method so that all the derived classes such as the asset listing view model can override this. And it's just going to be a void for dispose. Now I am not implementing iDisposable, which we'll see why a little bit later in this video. But just going to have a simple dispose method. And in fact, nothing is going to be in here because there's really nothing to dispose in the view model base. It's all about what the derived classes have to dispose. So in my asset listing view model, let's go ahead and override that dispose method. We'll just put it at the bottom. So override dispose and inside here, we are going to unsubscribe from the state changed event. So the asset store is no longer going to have a reference to this asset listing view model instance that we instantiate and our destructor will run. So now that we have this dispose method, we're going to have to call it somewhere. So the best place to call it would be, I believe, in the navigator where we set the new view model for the application. So this is basically whenever we leave a page and navigate to a new view model, we're going to dispose of the old view model. So to do that, we're going to take the current view model, which is the old view model because we haven't set the new value yet. And if it's not null, then we're going to call dispose. So there we go. Let's put a breakpoint in our asset listing view model in the dispose method. And let's try this out. We should dispose of the asset listing view model, right? All right, so I got a breakpoint in our current view model setter. And let's go to portfolio. We dispose of the home view model, I believe, right? Yep. So now let's dispose of this portfolio view model and let's continue. And we never actually hit the dispose for our asset listing view model. Now, why is that? Well, that is because our current view model was the portfolio view model. So let's go to that, which owns the asset listing view model. So we're going to have to override dispose here and pass along that disposal to our asset listing view model that we have in a property here. So basically, the disposals need to propagate down to child view models as well. So we can try this again. I think we should be good to go. Let's actually, all right, we still got the breakpoint in the destructor. So I'm thinking we're going to hit that destructor. Let's see. 
Alright, so we go to the portfolio page and now we leave and we're going to dispose by unsubscribing from the state changed event and now boom in the destructor immediately. So now we're cleaning up those resources and we don't risk having this ever growing memory leak, which is just never a good thing. So as I mentioned earlier, this is really only something that we need to do when our view models are not singletons. So if they're transient and we keep on creating and need to destroy those view models, then we would want to dispose of those event handlers. But if it's a singleton, then we wouldn't want to dispose right here because that would mean all the event handlers would get unsubscribed in the dispose method on our single instance, even though we're not really ready to dispose of the view model because that single instance is eventually going to get set as the current view model again, except this time all those event handlers are going to be disposed. So for example, I think I can make this portfolio view model a singleton again and go back in the asset listing view model. So we're going to hit this dispose and let's see how that affects our application. So I go to portfolio and now I dispose. Okay, so we're unsubscribing from state change on the asset store. And now let's say I buy something like AT&T. We'll buy two shares. So there we go, bought two. And now it didn't get updated in our portfolio view because we unsubscribed from this event and never resubscribed because that subscription occurs in the constructor, but this was a singleton. So the main issue is if this is a singleton, then we don't want to dispose. But if it's not a singleton, then we do want to dispose of it because we're going to be constantly creating and destroying the view model. So there's two approaches we can take to this. We could have a Boolean property here for can dispose. And then we could have a method, and then we can have a public method that isn't going to be overridable, and that'll be try dispose. And what we're going to do in here is if we can dispose, then of course we will dispose. And then we'll make the original dispose protected so that anyone who calls this will have to call try dispose and go through this can dispose boolean flag. So then this dispose method in asset listing view model will have to be protected. And same thing in portfolio view model, make this protected. And then in the navigator, we're going to call try dispose. So now that we have this flag on our base view model, if our view model is a singleton, we can make can dispose false. And if our view model is not a singleton and we're constantly creating and destroying these view models, then we would make can dispose true because we want to let the view model get destroyed. So the only thing that's annoying about having this flag approach is that we need to actually set that flag whenever we register these view models. So for example, the home view model, we can initialize that property when we instantiate the home view model that gets injected. And since we are injecting this as a singleton, then can dispose will be false. So I'd have to go through and actually do this for all of my view models. So if the portfolio view model was a transient, so not a single instance, I'd have to create a method. So like create portfolio view model. And then I have to instantiate the portfolio view model, pass in an asset store that I'd get from my services. So as you can see, this is already becoming a pain. And then, and then set the can dispose property to true in this case because it's a transient. So I'd have to do that for all of these view models. And as you can see, such a pain. So a different approach is just, let's just make all of our view models transient. So none of them are going to be singleton, which means we're constantly going to be creating and destroying these view models, which means we're actually always going to want dispose to run. So we're not going to do any of this try dispose stuff. So let's get rid of all that and go back to our regular dispose, fix that everywhere, update our overrides. And there we go. So we've kind of taken this convention where our view models are not going to be singletons and we'll see how that affects our application. But let's fix all of this can dispose stuff. We actually don't need this function to create a portfolio view model. And then we can remove that here and just register the portfolio view model normally. And now all of our view models are transient. All right, so disposing of the asset listing view model still works and we should hit all of our destructors. There we go. So everything is getting cleaned up on our transient view models. And I would say the only downside of making these transient instead of singleton is that whenever we go to the home page, we have to reload all of this major index information since we're instantiating a new home view model, which means really the drawback of not having singleton view models is that you can't store persistent state in them. So for example, the home view model, we have this registered as transient, which means we 
get our home view model by calling this method every single time, and this loads the major index listing information from the API. So since this isn't a singleton anymore, we're going to be loading this information every single time we go to the home page. And obviously the alternative from having to do that was just registering that as a singleton, but we're not doing that anymore because we want to dispose of our view models. So how would we prevent having to load this information every time? Well, we would simply take the same approach that we do by putting our state into these stores that we have here. So we would have some kind of major index store and then store all of the major index information in those. But for now, we just have it all stored in our view model. So we're gonna leave it there for now. I'm okay with loading that every single time, but I would like to look into moving that into a store so we don't have to load every single time we go to the home page. So anyways, now that our view models are transient, we're gonna to have to implement dispose on all of our view models. So we've already done it on the asset listing view model and the portfolio view model. Those are getting cleaned up correctly, but there's other view models that need to clean up event handlers as well. So for example, the asset summary view model, we can override dispose here and unsubscribe from state changed. There we go. And of course, we have an asset listing view model in here and that needs to be disposed as well. So we can't forget that. Gotta dispose the child view models as well. So there we go, dispose. Let's keep on going. The buy view model, pretty straightforward. Nothing to dispose here. The home view model, we have an asset summary view model and as we recall, that needs to be disposed. So let's override dispose and call it dispose on the asset summary view model. And really, even though the major index listing view model doesn't need to dispose anything, we should still call dispose on it, I think. Because in reality, the home view model doesn't really know if these view models actually have anything to dispose inside these methods. All it knows is that this major index listing view model has a method called dispose, so we're just going to call it. The main view model is a little bit weird, so we do actually have some things to dispose here, and we did register our main view model as a transient, but we only resolved this once, and that is when we instantiate our new main window, which is also a singleton, so we only do this once, and that also means that the main view model is never actually disposed, because the only place we ever call dispose is on our current view model in the navigator, and we never set the current view model as the main view model, so I think I am going to leave it as a transient and just override dispose here even though we're never actually going to call dispose since it doesn't go through the navigator and it lasts the entire lifetime of the application anyways. So we'll implement the dispose logic even though this probably will never get called and really doesn't need to be called anyways. Alright so last but not least we have the cell view model which uses an asset listing view model so we are just going to dispose of the asset listing view model. And I also have these message view models, and I did say that all child view models should be disposed, although I have been ignoring these because they're just so simple, but I really should be calling dispose on them. So I am gonna go through and update all of these, call dispose, just for consistency. Another thing I might wanna consider, which is a little bit overkill, is disposing of these asset view models that I have in this assets collection. So before I clear the collection, I might want to go through and dispose those. Although they don't really do anything, like they're really just pure view models. I'm not sure if they would ever have any logic that would require them to be disposed. But I feel like I've already unnecessarily enforced this dispose everything rule on myself. So I am going to have a method to dispose assets. And all we're going to do in here is iterate over all of our assets in our assets collection. And call asset.dispose. And the reason I put this in a method is because I also want to dispose of the assets when I dispose of this asset listing view model. So again, kind of overkill because we don't actually do anything in the asset view model dispose method. We don't even override it, but just doing it for consistency. So the idea is all view models are going to be disposed no matter what. All right, so let's get rid of this destructor in the asset listing view model. I already made sure that worked. Let's try a different view model. So that asset summary view model, that's a good one to test. Let's make sure that this gets destructed. All right, so we're gonna go to the portfolio page. There we go, it took a little bit for the garbage collector to get it, but it did get destroyed, so all is good. We are now disposing of our view models 
and making sure we don't face any potential memory leaks. So hopefully I didn't miss anything in any of these V models. I'll have to go through and verify that when I check this in. But actually one thing I did want to discuss, I mentioned this earlier, is why I'm not using I disposable. So I'm going to bring back that destructor and put a breakpoint here. And let's go into my base view model, view model base, and let's have this implement I disposable. And we don't actually have to change anything because we already have a dispose method. So let's try this and make sure that we hit that destructor in the asset summary view model, which we just showed that we did. Let's make sure we still do. And I have created and destroyed a bunch of home view models, and we still have not hit it. So we are calling the dispose logic. So I'll put a breakpoint there. We do dispose, but for some reason we never hit the destructor. And it has something to do with the I disposable interface. I'm not sure why it never calls destructors. I'm really not sure how it interferes with the garbage collector. I did a little bit of research, couldn't find anything interesting, but by implementing that interface, for some reason our destructors just never run. And just to be clear, if we look at our objects, so we take a snapshot of the memory usage and then search for the asset summary view model. As you can see, there's five instances of it, so it definitely never gets cleaned up. And I'm not sure why iDisposable is doing that to me. If you have any ideas why, please let me know in the comments. I know iDisposable even says on this documentation provides a mechanism for releasing unmanaged resources. So I'm not really sure if event handlers are considered unmanaged resources, so maybe this is a bad use case for iDisposable anyways. But I still have no idea why the object doesn't get garbage collected. Maybe it does after a really, really, really long time. But anyways, that's going to wrap up this video. So we went ahead and added disposing for our view models so that we can unsubscribe from event handlers, which allows our view models to actually get destroyed, which wasn't so important when our view models were registered as singletons, since we weren't constantly creating view models anyways that would need to be destroyed. But if view models are registered as transient, then they definitely need to be cleaned up. And disposing gets a little bit weird when you have a mix of transient and singleton view models, which I demonstrated with the whole try dispose logic and the dispose flag. So instead, we are just going to register all of our view models as transient to solve that issue, which doesn't cause too many issues other than having to load the home view model every time we go to the home page, which could be fixed by moving major index information into some kind of major index store, which we might do a little bit later. Anyways, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.